I am horrified. <laughs> why, Greg? I'll tell you why, helpful friend. <laughs> Because next week, I'm going to just tell you something. Next week, the, uh, the great operatic singer, Renee Fleming, is on this show. But she, can't, she couldn't be there at the actual time. So she came here earlier today into the studio, just before we started the show, which is, of course, live. And she was here. And <laughs> She's Renee Fleming. She's known the world over as being one of the greats in the opera world. And, and when I say great, I mean it in the most way. <laughs> Anyway, you have a guest like that, it's a bit of class. So, uh, as you know, we have, uh, you know, very little in the way of equipment here at this show. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, they even have an immigrant host in it, for heaven's sake. <laughs> so... So, anyway, Chunky B, our warm-up guy, we call him Chunky B, but he's lost 40 pounds, so now he's Hunky B. <laughs> So, so he goes to introduce, he goes uh, to introduce Renee Fleming to the, the great uh -huh, opera singer to the studio audience, who tonight are half in the bag anyway. And, uh, I like that. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm half in the bag anyway. What the hell is that? I used to work in vaudeville. Really? Sure I did, yeah. Here's 20 bucks. <laughs> anyway, he goes to introduce her to the studio audience. They're all drunk anyway. And, and he called her. He, he does this whole thing. She's the greatest singer in the world. And then he goes, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rebecca Fleming. <laughs> Let's recap. Her name is Renee Fleming. She's a giant star of the opera. He calls her Rebecca Fleming. So, when I charge out full of sturm and drang and furious at his terrible, oafish mistake, he says to me, sorry, man, I knew a chick in high school called Rebecca Fleming. <laughs> and I'm like... I'm like... You can't say the word chick. Allowed anymore. There's been an entire movement. What do they call it again? Oh yes, feminism. You know you can't say you can't say chick anymore. And he's like, well, what can you say? And I, and I don't know. <laughs> and this is my plea to you, ladies. Let's get a, a uniform policy. Just tell us what we can and can't say, and then we won't get it wrong. But I won't say chick. And I won't say Rebecca Fleming either. <laughs> we'll be right back. enough thank you really please sit down that's right thank you please sit down relax I think you may have mistaken me for someone else I think you may have mistaken me for Rebecca Here's what happened. I'll tell you later. <laughs> anyway, 
for the purposes of this show, I would like to be known as Rebecca. <laughs> I will explain later. <laughs> You can call me Rebecca or the second Mrs. De Winter. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a great day for America. It is a great day. Not such a great day for the health care reform. The so-called public option died on the Senate floor today. It could have survived, but apparently it had a pre-existing condition. <laughs> I'm sorry about that joke, but it's been a very slow Tiger Woods day. No, 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 mistress, no mistress at all. It's like, I think they've kind of their own... That's it. I think we're done. <laughs> or are we? <laughs> you know who would love that public option healthcare joke, though? That would be George Stephanopoulos. And it was announced today he will replace Diane Sawyer on Good Morning America. <laughs> Congratulations, George. You know, he's got the legs for it. I think it's a good choice. He's... <laughs> You know, he used to dance under the name Rebecca. <laughs> anyway, it's a great day for our president, President Barack Obama. He accepted a Nobel Peace Prize in Norway. I don't want to say this Obama love is out of control, but his acceptance speech for the Nobel Prize just won the Pulitzer Prize, and his overall performance <laughs> has just won an Oscar. <laughs> Do you know, if Obama really wants to earn the Peace Prize, he should resolve the most troubling conflict of our time. The Tiger Woods and Mrs. Woods. Uh, <laughs> you sort that one out, you get a prize. There's your Nobel Peace Prize out there. Well, you see, the thing is, uh, no, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, uh, controversy for uh, President Obama in Norway because apparently he snubbed the Norwegian royal family. <laughs> I know, I didn't know the Norwegians had a royal family, but they did. <laughs> the last of the Vikings. Anyway, the uh, <laughs> Norwegian royal family... I just snubbed them there, too. Now I'm in trouble. I snubbed the Norwegian... That's right, I snubbed you, Norwegian royal family. How dare he snub us? Why are you talking a German accent? Because I don't know what a Norwegian accent sounds like. <laughs> it's probably something quite Germanic. Anyway, I, I snubbed them by calling them Vikings. He snubbed them by cancelling lunch with them. Lunch? <laughs> I said that again because I went, lunch, all high. And I think you probably thought, what the hell does he say? What the hell is lunch? He cancelled lunch. He was meant to have lunch with the Norwegian royal family, and he cancelled. And I'm like, well, don't be silly, Norwegian royal family. Even if the president doesn't invite you, just show up and crash the party. That's how we do it in America. <laughs> now, the... The Peace Prize is handed out in Oslo, Norway, but Oslo's been in the news this week because of that big swirly thing in the sky over Oslo. Did we get a picture of it? Look, there's a... Look at that. I know, they're calling for Batman or something. What the look at <laughs> I'm fascinated by these lights. Not because I think they might be UFOs, because lights in general fascinate me because we don't have any here in this studio. <laughs> middle of your screen. <laughs> Let's get another picture of that thing over Oslo. Look at that. Look at that, though. Isn't that amazing? That's a... That's, that, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> Strange star-like object over Oslo right before Obama arrives. A gift <laughs> of a gold medal given by a group of wise men. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> Pro Nah. Even MSNBC are going, nah, you took it too far. <laughs> anyway, some people say that the light was a UFO coming to welcome Obama, which is, of course, ridiculous, because if it was really a UFO, they would take Joe Biden back to his home planet. <laughs> Come on, Joe. You bothered these people long enough. Let's go and embarrass the people of Pluto. <laughs> Do they have trains? Yes, they have trains. <laughs> Nobody has a good explanation for this big glowy thing in the sky. The scientists have no idea what it is up there, but they say that if you uh, sink it upright and put on the second side, a dark side of the moon, and maybe, like, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> now, I've never been to Norway, uh, but I might go if they give out the Nobel Prize for fart jokes. <laughs> 
I'd like to thank burritos, uh, curry, everyone who's ever pulled my finger, thank you. <laughs> tell you about the time Susan Sarandon pulled my finger. <laughs> she did. I was at the Emmys when she was walking by and I kind of met her a little bit because of the show and I was sitting down and she was kind of walking by all kind of grand and Susan Sarandon and I went oh hello and she she kind of turned around to shake my hand but she didn't really have time and so she did, I just held my hand out and she pulled my finger. <laughs> now I grew up with a brother so you pull my finger. <laughs> And the desperate housewives were sitting behind me. <laughs> you should have seen the look on their faces. <laughs> anyway, the main reason I'd like to go to Norway is is because they're all very good looking. I hear Oslo is filled with supermodels walking down the street with their blonde hair, their perfect boobies. I hear the women aren't bad either. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Norway, I've always wanted to go to Norway because they've got a big holiday called Constitution Day on the 17th of May. The whole country celebrates, they go nuts. Now, the 17th of May also happens to be my birthday. Aha, you see. <laughs> Constitution Day and my birthday, very different, of course. One, one is celebrated every year by Norwegian men carousing. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one's uh, Norwegian Constitution Day. Anyway, no. Oh, shut up. Do you know what else they've got in Norway? Reindeer. <laughs> really, I hear you say? <laughs> really, Craig? Reindeer? Yes, they do. Reindeer that fly Santa around? No, reindeer can't fly. What? Spoiler alert, yes. <laughs> and people are like, oh, it would be magical if reindeer could fly. No, it would not be magical. Have you ever had a bird poop on your head? No, will you? <laughs> Imagine a giant moose-like animal flying overhead. Still, it's good luck, I suppose. <laughs> nah, I got nothing. You talk about Norway for eight and a half minutes. See what you can up with. We'll take a break, we'll be right back. And now, a Sean Connery holiday memory. It was Christmas 19... <laughs> Christmas 1999. My... My greatest Christmas ever. It probably had something to do with my new invention. The mistletoe belt buckle. Welcome back. Sorry, I'm just in the middle of something. I was just looking over the guests who are on the show next week. It's very, very exciting. Uh, uh, Bob Barker's here next week. Sigourney Weaver, Judy Dench, and uh, look, Re Rebecca Fleming is here. <laughs> next week too. Anyway, not to worry, uh, we got the big, it's the big Norway show tonight. <laughs> uh, where we're celebrating everything there is to say about Norway. Which, let's be honest, not that much. Uh... <laughs> oh, wait, uh, you know who was from Norway? Edvard Munch, who painted the scream. You know the, ah, picture of the scream. We used to use it here all the time. Do you get a picture of the scream still? There, that one, yes. Yeah. Yes, he's a... Uh... That's right. Well done, Edvard Munch. <laughs> well done. The studio audience here in California really enjoy your mental anguish. <laughs> well, let's be honest, they do enjoy mental anguish. Or else, why are they watching this show? <laughs> Actually, I think it looks like the poster for the movie Home Alone. Let me see it again. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you know that Munch actually painted dozens of that painting? He didn't just paint one painting the scream. Remember that was stolen as well? They said it was stolen in broad daylight. The burglars broke into the museum as it was open during the day. I'm like, well, if it was open during the day, they didn't, they didn't break in. They just walked in and took your painting, didn't they? <laughs> yes. 
Anyway, people say that Munch was the first modern artist because he painted, he painted, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of that image, you know, which is a very modern art thing to do. Uh, I wonder what Andy Warhol would think of that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> or Salvador Dali. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Or a giraffe. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you have Ooh. it. Yeah, yeah. Giraffe probably wouldn't care that much about it. <laughs> Giraffes don't care much for modern art. You know why? Because they're not materialists. <laughs> and modern art's become all about money. And giraffes only care for tall shrubs. <laughs> which, coincidentally, don't grow in Norway. Yeah, it's a pretty bad one tonight, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'd stick around. This could be the worst crap ever. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. everybody or to our Norwegian friends that's not Norwegian but I say it to the Norwegians anyway it drives them crazy uh, do we have time for email yes we do thank you Norwegian friend with a German accent uh, this is from Erica in Kokomo in Indiana Indiano <laughs> Indiana uh, hey, Craig, I opened a package which arrived at the house the other day and it was a puppet of my husband. <laughs> he must have ordered it online or something. What do I make of this? I'm a little weirded out. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> That's a little weird. It's very, you know what's weirder about it is like you're, you, you get a package and, you're out and you open it up and it's a puppet of your husband and you think, hmm. I think I better email a late night talk show about this. <laughs> this isn't the kind of thing that you just bring up in a marriage. <laughs> Should I ask my best girlfriend, what about my gay friend that helps me with everything? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is late night talk show, it's that serious. <laughs> All right. This is from Virginia in Farmingdale in New Jersey. Virginia says, there's a whole lot of information there. Virginia, Farmingdale, New Jersey. <laughs> Virginia says, hi, Craig. Since you hug your guests each night, I don't always hug them. Since you hug your guests each night, how come you don't apply that hand sanitizer to your neck and face as well? Well, two things, two, three things, some things. Hey, uh, First of all, I don't shake hands with anyone and then put hand sanitizer on. That I don't do, so I don't even know where you're coming from, even starting off with that. And then you say, well, people don't use, you know, I, if I hug people, they don't use their face or their neck to pick things on their body, do they? <laughs> it's not like, oh, my ass is itchy, I'll just scratch it using my cheek. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you can do that, you're in Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> this is from Paul and Ogden in Utah. <laughs> Dear Craig, says Paul, I sprained my neck and have to wear around this huge neck brace for several months now. Have any thoughts about jazzing it up a bit and decorating it? <laughs> well, I get asked this a lot. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You probably want to get one of them uh, bedazzlers going on it. Yeah, bedazzler. <laughs> bedazz or, you, you know what you could do? You could get it to make it look like a preacher's thing, like, like, like a dog collar, and then get, like, big boxy shoulders, because it's too big to actually be a real preacher's thing. So you could be, like, a dog collar, like, preacher's thing, and then get a big boxy shirt thing on and call yourself Pastor Robot. And... <laughs> and you could solve crimes. <laughs> Pastor Robot, I've got a problem. What is it? Someone sent me a 
box with a puppet of my husband in it. <laughs> what? Let me take a look at this. No, this is beyond my powers. What you need is a crap late night talk show for that. <laughs> yeah. This is from Ashley and Murray in Kentucky. Uh, Dear Craig, your show is the reason my boyfriend and I started dating. Now, what kind of... I, why? <laughs> why? You're up late, there's... I'm the only thing on TV, so you start doing something else. Is that what? <laughs> Anyway, she says, I was wondering if you would come to our university for our pajama jam. Bring your own jammies. Be, uh... <laughs> no, I can't come to your uh, pajama party at your university, delightful young people, for I hate you. <laughs> Let me be more specific. I don't hate you because you're you. I just hate you for your youth, your, your optimism, and your, uh, your lack of bitterness. <laughs> It makes me feel old and corrupt, which of course I am. <laughs> I only have one skill left, and that's solving puppet-related crimes. <laughs> I don't even think it's a crime to send a puppet through the post, unless that puppet contains heroin! <laughs> I'm also shocked that I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> what? It could be. That could be a way heroin smugglers are smuggling heroin into America, using adorable puppets of people's husbands. So that you open up and go, what the hell is this? And you just put it aside. Then other people who are involved in the smuggling ring come up dressed as robot pastors. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Over there. And to our Norwegian viewers, Norwegians praise to come later in post-production. <laughs> Wait a minute, how can you have post-production if you do the show live? Oh, Ooh la la! <laughs> no need for pixelation. <laughs> My first guest tonight, well, here's a clue to who it is. Uh... <laughs> Wait, don't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> He's written this very interesting, very, very interesting book uh, because he's a strange man. Uh, <laughs> funny, funny, strange, complicated, adorable, all these things that I look for in a partner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the book's called Here's the Deal, Don't Touch Me. It's written by a gentleman called... It's a, a New York Times bestseller now as well. Oh, I wonder what that feels like. Oh, I don't need to wonder. I know. <laughs> Please welcome... <laughs> Please welcome the very lovely Harry Mandel, everybody. It's lovely to see yes. you. look very well. Uh, thank you. Author to author. Uh, yeah, and congratulations thank you. on the uh, New York the Times. New yes. York Times bestseller list. Yes, yes. And you're celebrating by going parachuting later, I yes. see. I... <laughs> I don't even know what this is. It's, it's just uh, fantastic, is it, what it is. I don't know what it is. It's just something as it's an ensemble. It's it's uh, it's, it's uh, a ninja, it's a fashion ninja thing that's going on. It's awesome. I'm a fashion ninja. That's yes. what I've been known as. When I know. you think of ninja and fashion. You think Howie Mandel. I have always... Tim Gunn, then Howie Mandel, I think. In that order. Mm, yes. Sometimes. So, but this is very exciting. It's very you know, exciting. like you said, you know, for me, this is a whole new thing. It's... And I'm not thrilled. I wasn't thrilled to, you know, I got asked to write a book, and then I thought I'd have a funny book, and then, it's, it's, hopefully it is funny, but then I realized how oh, screwed yeah. up I am, and I put it there, and it's published, and I can't get it back. No. My book's very similar. I... 
asked myself too, in my book, and I know you did it in oh, your book. Oh, I, I, I did it during the commercial break. <laughs> You did? Were, I, you a, were you a bedwetter as a child? Not even in the bed, just out in public. Really? Yes, I have. I, why is that funny? I wasn't in the bed. Oh, they, they, listen, they love mental anguish. You should yes. have seen them when I, I showed know. them the munks the scream. They were like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I know. I yeah. am mental anguish. Yeah. Mental anguish is me. I, I, was, I have a severe ADD, and as a kid, I would say, oh, I got to go to the bathroom, and I'd go, and then there'd be a little noise or something shiny, and I'd be off that way, and then uh, I wet myself. <laughs> And I go, oh, I forgot I had to go to the bathroom. I would forget where I was going, and I would just, I would urinate all the time. I would just always, because I forgot. And they'd this say, is... why didn't you go before? And I would say, I was. And then something came up. So I'm I... terribly alarmed for you. Why? Well, this is in Canada where you grew up. Yeah, so it was cold, so right, I would freeze. Right, so freeze. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was always chipping icicles yeah. off my crotch. Oh. I was always... Oh, that's what... <laughs> Just chipping icicles off my crotch, <laughs> that's Mom! That's, yeah. good. that's good. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think... But I would, I would... And then I didn't want the kids to know that that was the issue so that I would fall into the ditch. But the ditch was nowhere near the school, so, so I would have, have to, to run to the ditch. And they'd go, what happened? You fell in the ditch. And they'd go, the ditch is nowhere near her here. i go, well, that's... That was quite a tumble. I fell yeah, yeah. here and then rolled and rolled and rolled. And then rolled go, onto a bus they, yes, they, and then took the bus to the ditch. Yes, but I didn't want to. I'd be in the ditch, and then I'd realize I'm in the ditch. I don't want the germs, so I would jump out of the... It was a mess. Oh, no, it's you, a whole you, book you, here. You, you had the germs even then? I had the germs all the time. Why are you I, worried about germs when you're in Canada? There's no germs in Canada. No, I just don't touch things. I don't, I right. don't touch things. Which is a problem, I have to tell you, for me, because I, and I think many other people, because when you come, you're very adorable, approachable man. Thank you. And so what I wanted to do is just go over and hug you and lick your head. No, and, no, no, no. And <laughs> I want to go over and, and mush myself up against you. I want to, you know, get my saliva on you and stuff. And I... <laughs> Why do you want to do that? I don't know. It's I just can't, because I know you don't want me to touch. do that. No, I, I don't I, mind. I don't mind the. Don't, you don't? No, 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 I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. that. I mean, but it's just the the face to face. Well, I you know I had children, so I, I did a well, lot right, of. Right, right, right. But yeah. I just there was no shaking hands. I never went. Uh, <laughs> honey, you wanna? I never did that. I just it was. So with, it's a deal then. We're going to have sex. Yes. Look, yeah, no, no hands. Right, right. Look, no oh, hands. You could, I can do it without hands. <laughs> yes. Cirque du Soleil are also from Canada, aren't they? Yes. Right? Yes. If you see me in a public restroom, it's like Act Two from any of those Cirque. You call it the Soleil? Yes. Yes, yeah, Cirque du Soleil. That's what I call it. Is it is it Soleil? I thought it was Soleil. Soleil. It's Soleil. Soleil. You say tomato. I, I'll listen, say tomato. I say, I'll tell you why I say Soleil. Tell me why. Because that's how it's pronounced in Norway. <laughs> So, uh, on this special night... Hey, listen, by You the... know what Salai means by the in Norwegian? Way, look what I got, by the way. Oh, you thank you. That's See? my... You know, I don't use that. Why not? I don't. And I'm not uh, disparaging... Uh, they might be a sponsor, and I don't mean to... I but I to... used it so much. It, it's in my book. I used it... When I had a talk show, yes. I used to have an afternoon talk show. And, and I used to have that, and I had, a, like, a bucket. I would soak in it. And then my friend gave me... Uh, uh, he's a surgeon. He gave me that surgical wash. I would do that every time, like somebody came on in the commercial. And then I started getting warts all over my hands. And I didn't know. I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me that I had killed all my antibodies. You know, it's good to have bacteria on your hands. I had nothing. I had no so if I touched anything, I got like warts and horrible viruses all over my hands. So I don't, I don't use that anymore. Like it's like it's more healthy for me now. I just don't touch anything. So instead of this, I'm just hands free. Everything is hands free. I, I try. You should see me drive, like, like, like with the, the steering wheel. Why don't, you, why don't you wear gloves? I do. I do have gloves. Wear gloves. I wear gloves. Driving and gloves with the, the, you know, they used to have the driving gloves with the little thing in the back. You look like James Bond. Kind of like, no, I will drive. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, <laughs> and you can see chicks if you wear driving gloves. No, I wear, I wear rubber. I have, I have rubber. <laughs> <laughs> I have rubber gloves and I have masks. I am hermetically sealed. I have a hazmat suit. I have everything. I actually, it's not a joke, it's what I do. I do. When the family's sick, when the family is sick, I have to dress up. Do you get, do you get? Look how uh, I got, it got awkwardly quiet for yeah, just no, a second. Yeah, no, I think everyone was kind of like, oh. Now they no, just feel no. better. Do you get uh, vaccinations? Uh, no, I can't go to the doctor's office. Are you talking about, like, the H1N1? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the chances that my book would come out in the midst of this pandemic? You're on a book tour. You got all I these know, people going, how I loved you ever since the beginning. Right, right, right. And, and you know what I'm I not going to do it. So and I'm not, I'm not plugging. I'm not, you notice I'm on television right now promoting my book, but I'm not telling you where I'm doing signings. And if you know where I'm going to be, don't show up. That's... <laughs> I don't want them to show up. You know what? If you want to...
I won't say the dates. They, 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 they're they're really mad. They, they you know don't what? go. No, I don't. I have to go because that's contractually. I tweet. I, I, I'm on Twitter. Howie right. M. Mandel, I'll talk to you. Just don't come near me. Don't touch me. <laughs> Buy the book. I'll talk to you. I, 140 characters. We can have a conversation. Right? Do you tweet? No. No, that's the no. only way. That's for me. That's what the my, new clean way What I do with my friends is I get up, I lick their hands, no, I, uh, no. I get all in, I go like that, give no. them noogies. Yeah. <laughs> You well, I've already got I, one fan, and he's a dog. So that's what I do. Really? Yeah. Do you have a dog? Uh, my, my wife has dogs. I don't touch the dogs, but she has them. What kind of dogs? Uh, uh, a rescue. She has a, uh, I don't know, they're that's like That's not much. an actual breed of dog, you know. I... <laughs> but you know what she said? She rescued it from a homeless woman downtown. She rescued What do you mean dog? rescue? You mean she stole it from a hobo? <laughs> yes. She stole a hobo's dog? Yeah, and she's so amazed. It's my only consolation. <laughs> no! <laughs> my husband's Howie Mandel! <laughs> and she's fascinated by the fact that it's, that it's housebroken. I go, it's never been in a house. That's, right. that's the only way. It's, that's why it's outside. It sees carpet. It won't go on carpet. Right. Concrete. It's, what is this strange bottom threatening fiber? Right. Yes, right. that's what the dog's thinking. Oh, that's what the dog's thinking. Yeah, I, I thought you were getting a weird feeling and you were thinking. I... <laughs> Whenever you're here, I get a weird feeling. That I do. bottom threatening fiber feeling? I do. My really? bottom twitches when I meet you. <laughs> oh. oh. You said we could talk about anything because we don't touch. Yes, but I don't want... It's bothering me. I'm a little... I, I feel very uncomfortable right now that your bottom is twitching. It's not twitching anymore. <laughs> oh, stop. No, it stopped twitching around 1973, actually. <laughs> You said when you meet me, your bottom twitches. You didn't know me in 1973. Didn't I, Howie? <laughs> ah, the book. That <laughs> other child in the ditch, that was me. <laughs> Howie, congratulations. Thank you. A stellar Please. book, a strange and wonderful tale. Howie Mandel, everybody. We'll be right back. to the big OCD Norwegian show where we talk about how nice it is to be really, really clean and Norwegian. <laughs> By the way, don't tweet me because I ain't tweeting you back. <laughs> but you can touch me. <laughs> but you're not allowed to tell anybody. <laughs> it's a little phobia I have. <laughs> Who's this guy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, my next guest is an actress. Really? Yes. <laughs> so she's in the show Gary Unmarried, which is on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. on CBS. But it's good. <laughs> Take a look at this. Tommy, how you doing? Hey, Larry, what's up? What are you... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were in Malibu this morning. Are you all right? I'm, I'm sorry. How do you know my son? And hello. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Larry. Hi. <laughs> hey, Malibu, you've been surfing before school? That's why you're late all the time? Why didn't you tell me? Look, I don't know how to explain it. I just didn't want you to see me until I was really good. Oh, honey, that is so sweet. Did I mention I was a cheerleader in high school? <laughs> we just met. Oh. <laughs> well, I was. <laughs> It's a bit racy for CBS, isn't it? <laughs> People flirting. Please welcome the very lovely Paula Marshall. Paula Marshall. You look sensational. I love your boots, by the way. Thanks. Very, very nice. Nice Neiman, and wintry. Neiman Marcus. Well, you know, there was a girl on the show the other day, and it looked like it was 80 degrees out. It was like 37 when I woke up yesterday, so I'm wearing a sweater. Yeah, no, it's it, it's working. It, it's it all kind of, yeah, you get that cozy, and you're rubbing your legs. You look everything. nervous. I am nervous, yeah. You put, you put a woman in a pair of boots, I just I come apart. I know, they're good. <laughs> and, and by the way, Howie, like, I don't think he has a germ problem, but we totally made out backstage. I mean, like, I think he's full of crap, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe just to sell the book. <laughs> 
Which you should buy. I'm sure it's, it's great. It, no, so. it's no, it's real. Is it? Yeah, no, well, it's it's very dangerous condition he suffers from. It's a cleanly Canadian thing. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any of that yourself? Do you just like roll I, around in muck? I, and I stuff? don't mind. I mean, I, I do. Uh, I do clean things with the. Purell. Do you do? Well, I've I got do. some left over from Harry. I Look, do. I got I got tons But I like of the it. I like the expensive, uh, stinky kind that you get at Whole Foods. That yeah, my makeup artist has. It's like EO or something. It's really You have your own tonight. makeup artist? I do, she's backstage, Cheryl. You think I look like this? <laughs> I look good I look. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, good for you. Where are you from? Huh, I'm from Rockville, Maryland. Where McGruff the crime dog, by the way, is from there. <laughs> I know. Has anyone ever heard of that? Yes, McGruff I have. Crime McGruff dog. the crime. Does he solve crimes or commit them? He's just a commercial. Because a guy in a commercial. Right. And and that's all I know about Rockville, except you're not supposed to go back. That REM told me. And I don't really go back. Hardly ever. Do you still have family there? I uh, yeah, my sisters are there. My brothers in Virginia. Well, wouldn't they be upset that if you're like you know you're kind of trash talking Rockville right I know, now? I kind of am. Know? Yeah. Kinda, you go back there, the Rockville Civic. I know. Pride I know. will be well, damaged. My my high school went went under, and so now there's went like. Under what? You know, went underwater. Uh, no, uh, it's, it turned into another school, so it's not there. So I always thought, oh gosh, when I finally make it big, I'll go back to like wait, my wait, homecoming wait, game. Well, wait, it's not there wait, anymore. Wait, so wait, it's awful. you went to an underwater high school? I did. School? I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. You yeah. scuba dive? Look how well. The... That's why I'm so pale. I never saw the sun. Look at that. See? No, yeah, you're not Craig. that pale. I'm a little pale. Really? Yeah, not as pale as all your your girls in Glasgow. I was there. My husband did a movie there. And my gosh. What, the girls in Glasgow are pale? Very pale. No, no. There's not a lot of sun there. No, there's not a lot of sun there's in Glasgow, sun. but the good thing is when, you know, when you take uh, your clothes off, there's yes. no unsightly lines. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It's just but smooth. It's smooth. And, yeah. and it's very reflective. It's like, like, you can, it, yeah. it's like having sex with a ghost. It Well... <laughs> Ask my husband. Really? Yeah, very pale. My, very do you think pale. I could go up to your husband and say, what's it like having sex with your like wife? Like Very I think pale. He might, I think he might be offended. He might be. He might punch me in the jaw. He might. Yeah. He might. Where did you meet your husband? I met my husband uh, on a movie set, and then we ended up doing a TV show um, called Snoops. It was David Kelly's first big bomb, which... You know, I love being part of that. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but thanks to that show, I fell in love with Danny Nucci. Oh. And we have a beautiful little girl named Maya. And uh, that's the end of the story. No, it's not the end of the Is story. It's the beginning of the story. <laughs> yes, and they lived happily ever afterward. And hmm. what do you do together? Do you go surfing? Do you go to underwater schools? We, and you only send your own daughter to an no, underwater I'm not. school. No, we actually watch football. That's, I think, why he fell in love with me. That and because I drive a nice car, a Porsche. Um, uh, I think you mean a Ford. <laughs> well, I have a Ford. That's funny. I actually have a Ford Escape. Uh, a Excellent hybrid, product. A hybrid, because I felt so guilty. You know, when the, the gas prices went up, it was crazy. Yeah. So I was like, I have so a Porsche. So you bought another car? I bought, well, I have actually, have, I did, I know. Because I have this Porsche in the garage, and I was like, you know, so you get, what, 12 miles to the gallon? So, I, don't, I wouldn't gosh, know. So I little. work here. Okay. <laughs> but I did. I bought a Ford. I love buying American, and so I, I now, I think, maybe get, like, 27 miles to the gallon. It's bright green. My Actually, my director, Jimmy Burroughs, the king of sitcom directing, he hates my color. Every time we park next to each other, he always gives me grief about it, because it's so ugly next to his, like, you know, Beamer or Mercedes or something. Yeah, that must be awful. It's, an, it's a yeah. big, it's a, it's a bright-colored car. Uh, so people can see it, because, like, I want to be safe. So yes. I have a Ford and a Porsche. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's good Thanks. to know that the recession's over. Thanks, I know. <laughs> Very lovely Paula Marshall, everybody. We'll be right back. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> People often say to me, Craig, you're tall. And I say, not really. <laughs> and then I look around to see who said it, and it's usually a, a very small person. <laughs> I think we better do this again. <laughs> or not. Ooh la la. Good night, everybody. <laughs>